this is Scotty Hill from Skid Row, and welcome to another episode of Riff Lords. I'm gonna be covering a lot of Skid Row riffs. We're gonna go from the riffs you're familiar with to some of them you may not have heard or a little bit, a little bit more underground. Enjoy, grab your guitar, tune it up. Let's do this together, nice and slow. See if you can keep up. Today we'll start with Big Guns. Big Guns was on the first Skid Row record and from what I remember about it, we were going for a kind of an ACDC type of feel, especially in the chorus. You can really feel those, those upbeats on those big power chords. I'll start with the intro and then we'll work our way to the verse. <laughs> starts with uh, the intro, which is big G chord, and then that little lick that goes, that'd be. So after that, we go into the verse riff, which is kind of the intro riff. If you notice, I'm fretting it with my thumb. It's the third fret there, and it just it makes it a little easier to. So you're up here, two middle strings, D and G. And you're pumping on that G that low G with your thumb. You got the D and G string, fifth fret, and then third fret. Pumping on that low G. There's a little uh, F and C in between that uh, where it changes keys into the in the middle of the first verse. And then goes into the key change. So that's uh, same riff on seven and five with the open A string. Next, we go into C and then D into the chorus. So those are the big A, C, G, A, G, D. Snake plays a little riff in the middle of there. And then back into the main riff. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's put it all together. That's just a matter of personal preference. When we started playing it, I probably used my, my finger, my first finger to play those notes. But over, over time, it just developed into like something more natural. Uh, there's no rules. You can, uh, you can do it however you like, as long as it sounds good. You know, when you play this kind of music, you use a high gain. And uh, a lot of times there's a lot of noise coming through your amp and all that. So therefore, when you're not playing, you know, the volume control is is a good on off switch so it's 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 very natural for me to go to the volume control to uh, use it as a kind of a noise gate so for example uh you can hear that drives me crazy when I hear all that noise and squealing coming out of people's amps. So learn how to do that. Learn where your volume control is. After a while, you won't even think about it. It'll just happen. Next song we're gonna work on is Here I Am, also off of the first Kid Row record. Uh, it's a busy riff. Uh, once, you get it, once you get it in your head and you, you figure it all out, it's, uh, it comes pretty easily. <laughs> Nice and slow. There's a little grace note, kind of pedal tone thing going on on the open A and open E strings. Last part. The E chord you play it in this position. Different inversion. Once again, the whole thing. You know, with a riff like this, it's important that you start slow. Even after playing all these years, I play finger style guitar, and that's a new type of thing for me. And I have to start really, really, really slow. So, and it's, it's hard after playing so many years to go back and learn things and play them slow. So learn that from the beginning. The next song was the first time people ever saw Skid Row on MTV. It was our first video, it was our first single. It was uh, an anthem. It also went through many different uh, versions before the final version was cut. The verse used to be really busy and then it wasn't busy, and then it was, we had to busy it up a little more. So it went through a lot of, uh, a lot of those kind of things. Went through some lyric changes, and then finally fine-tuned it, and it's uh, the definitive uh, Skid Row song, Youth Gone Wild. <laughs>
Okay, the first thing you hear is the voice of Michael Wagner, the producer of the first Skid Row, first and second Skid Row records, um, say rolling. And then you got this B flat chord. There is no way to count that out. That's a total feel thing. Um, maybe a musicologist could put a, put a metronome on it and figure out what that, that is, but that's just us in the studio visualizing it. But when we do it live, we have a cue. Um, our front man, ZP, he'll go, we are the youth. Gone. Wild. So that's your B flat chord. Uh, and then the main riff. All right, so you got your two open strings, the G and the D, right in the middle. You slide up, fifth fret, third fret. So open, fifth, third, open. This is where everybody makes a mistake. It's right here. So, D string, third fret, G string, second fret, next chord, D string, third fret, G string, third fret. It is not, it's not that. There you go. So the, the second part of that figure is, so that is D string, first fret, G string, third fret. You put it all together and you have. All right, and there's a nice little, nice little stop in there. So you gotta play it kind of tight. And then the very last part. So you got this chord here that you just played. And then you pull off your first finger off of that D string. And then move everything over one string. A string first fret, D string third fret. So back to G. A lot of chick chick going on in there. It's in the right hand. Going into the B verse, you've got your verse chords. And then there's a little lick that goes. F. Just a, just a power chord there. You know, the, the first, the uh, root and the fifth. And then back to the open G. So you're doing that pull off, kind of like in the intro. You move that over to the A string, third fret, and D string, third fret. And then up a whole step. C. And then this lick. So it's uh, A string. Five, three, one, and then F chord. So you're on the F chord, you're chugging on that, and then you go to D sharp, and then D. You're on F, and then you go up to D sharp, D, and a little chugging thing. back into the chorus. So that is F, D sharp, D, and then we're going to do the verse.
verse at regular speed one more time. You're going to back off your volume, clean up your tone a little bit. You hear that volume open up? It's a nice sound. So you got it. You're a little on the clean side. You know, playing that song live is one of those things that people expect to hear it, people want to hear it. If you hear it, chances are you won't hear anything else after it. So we better wait till the end. It's probably the definitive song, uh, along with like Slave to the Grind or something like that. But it's just. Uh, it's really powerful. It's got that, it's like a march. It's very much like, you know, like soldiers marching in the street. So uh, it's, it's really powerful. So a lot of people want to know how to play the uh, main acoustic part to I Remember You. Although I don't have an acoustic guitar here, I will show you on this fine Les Paul. It's, uh, it's very basic. It's uh, a open G and open C chord. And there's a couple little licks in there, but the basic part without the licks would be now the way snake plays it and he played all the acoustic on that song he uh... he plays his g chord like this So you've got the G chord, and then a little lick in there, a little hammer on on the A string second fret, and he plays the first. Plays here. Let me let me give you the fret numbers: A string third fret, D string second fret, open G string, B string third fret, and open high E. So the chord sounds like this. You don't play the low E string. And then this little lick, a hammer on pull off on the B string to the third fret, open G string. So you got open G chord, and then this little lick in here. Hammer on, A string, second fret, open D, open G. C. The C plays that G note on the B string, third note B string, and then high E string is open. So I Remember You was a big uh, big hit for us. Um, it's also another song that's always in the set. And I love playing it. I love playing it. I love when the crowd sings along. I love doing the solo. I love just, it really feels good to, to play the song. Snake and Rachel wrote it in uh, what they call the green room back at Rachel's parents' house in Toms River, New Jersey. And it turned out great. Um, I remember working it out in rehearsal and thinking this is, this is going to be something special. Next song is called Forever. Forever was originally recorded for the first Skid Row record, and for some reason we didn't put it on there. But uh, on 40 Seasons, uh, Best of Skid Row, uh, we put it on as one of the bonus tracks. And it's a really cool tune, and I wanted to play the riff because it's a really cool riff. Here we go.
This is a song that's got a couple of different guitar parts in it. Right now we'll focus on the main riff. Starts on F sharp, G sharp, A, B, and you're chugging on those. And while you're chugging on those, you're playing this little deal here, which is G string, fourth fret, B string, fifth fret. So you got. It's all in the right hand over here. The important thing is to keep that right hand going like a machine, you know. After that, you have the verse, which started out as a C sharp minor seven, but wound up being just a power chord. But I accent it on the minor seven. C minor, C sharp minor seven. A. F sharp. D sharp minor seven. B. goes up to C sharp minor 7 again. So let me play that up to speed. So once again the verse. That part is It's just a little fill Climbs up. Right into the chorus. So that B, B verse part again. playing basically in the chorus you're playing pretty much the opening riff uh, you're just not chugging on it you're not doing that picking pattern you go and there's two parts here this part that I play which is just straight up you twist it a little bit here's the main riff again slow so when you play that, 
it's down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So it just starts down, up. Some guys use all down strokes, some guys combine them. I notice in the, the Richie Faulkner video, he talks about uh, the comparison to James Hetfield, and I'm more of Richie's school of uh, my picking style. I use a lot of up and down. It's easier for me to find a pocket. Some guys are exactly the opposite. Some of them use all down strokes. I don't know how they do it. Snake does it. It's, it's one of those things, I, it, it just doesn't groove for me. I can't, like, I wouldn't be able to do the riff to forever in all down strokes. Uh, it wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't have the it wouldn't have the uh, the pocket that it needs. So uh, it's just a matter of your preference. Uh, if I were to do it over again from the beginning, I would learn both. So uh, here's your chance. That's a good tip. And here's the main riff one more time from the top. <laughs> Moving on to Slave to the Grind, uh, the second Skid Row record. Our first record was very successful, got very successful very quick, uh, which put us on the road for a long time. Uh, we were on the road, the first tour was 16 months long, and we worked really hard and it was a lot of fun. But when we got back, we were kind of different people. We were pretty much seasoned touring musicians and our musical tastes have changed. Uh, what we were listening to on the bus was a lot different. And you got to keep in mind when the first record was written, it was written over a few years uh, prior to its release. So, uh, you're talking maybe four years, four or five years between when we started the band and when we started recording and writing to what you hear on Slave to the Grind. So different tastes and uh, this record was much heavier uh, by design. We did it, on, uh, that's what we wanted. We wanted the record to be heavier, it wanted to be powerful. Uh, so that's what we did and uh, you know, I'm very proud of it. It's a really, really cool piece of work, and it was a lot of fun to make. And uh, after all that time on the road, to get off the road, take a little time off, and go right into pre-production. And the record was written fairly quickly and um, recorded in Florida. And we were from New Jersey, and we were recording in Florida in February, so that was quite awesome. And uh, it was a good time. Great record. Slave to the Grind. Monkey Business. Uh, I believe it opens the record. I haven't listened to it in a long time, but uh, Snake uh, plays that intro, and I will do the best I can to do it justice. It goes like this. Okay, the intro. You gotta get a little bit of a clean tone going. I'll back off the volume. 
And he's kind of picks it with his fingers, I think. Uh, I'll have to call him and ask him. But. So what you're doing is you're playing. Uh, you got uh, the top half of like a power chord. And that would be F sharp. Um, you're playing uh, A string four, D string four. And then you're moving over here to G string two, D string two, and then back up, skip for fret. And then when you go down, you gotta throw this little lick in there. And you kind of slide into it too. Real slow. So, after that, it goes into the main riff. So it's all in the same position. These three are on the A and D string. Hammer on pull off, there's a little trill, I guess that's called. faster. You're doing a little muting over here too. Open, open won't sound so tight. I, I like to, I like to just mute it a little bit. Kind of get a feel for it, see what feels right to you. Now we got the verse. And once again, it's all, it's all in these. Um, so when you, when you hit this one, just slide up. Most important thing about this verse is the pocket, man. You've got to play a really good groove. Kind of keep it loose, but not too loose. Also, um, I'm not sure when. It's like every other figure in the verse. I throw this little... So that is the, the D string on the fourth fret and the B string on the fourth fret with your ring finger and your pinky. It's just a little, just so those little accent things. I don't even know if you can hear it on the record, but that's how I, that's how I've been playing it for a long time. Back to the verse. And then back into the riff. Another trill. That's my part, and Snake's part is. So, 
together you have. So in Skid Row, you get a lot of what Snake and I call pawooms. Snake Rachel and I call pawooms. We do them all the time. And we got the B verse. So B E A. And then you got this this riff that goes. So that part is uh, C sharp, C, B. A. A, B, E, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. So. is just the main riff. And then when the song breaks in, we'll play, play it again for you at regular speed. Slave to the Grind, the title track off of the Slave to the Grind record, so much fun to play. Powerful, fast, really, really cool. This song is in drop D, which means you take your E string, your low E string, and tune it down to D. So it sounds like this. And it goes like this.
in the beginning, you have two parts going on. Snake does the chugging part. For the sake of confusion, because of the drop D, I'll just give you the position. You're just covering up here. C, D. And then... Fifth fret. Slide up. So, Snake's doing the chugging there. Me, I'm just doing... So you kind of got kind of two parts going on there. We're playing the same thing, we're just different accents. He's chugging, I'm doing the power chords. And also, you know, I, I play that, that power chord up on D, and then I bring it down to kind of the open position and, and rake up on it. Yeah, so that's, uh, and then it breaks into the, to the main riff, which slow goes. You just sliding up, two to three. Five, five, three. Next part. This song, it doesn't have to be really tight. It shouldn't be really tight. Interesting story, when we went in to record it for the record, we played it really tight, and um, it didn't sound good. We didn't realize that until after it was recorded. And then we went back and listened to the demo that we did in a really good studio, and the demo version had a better feel to it, so we used the demo version for the record. So what you hear uh, is the demo. Pretty damn good demo, but uh, <clears throat> that just goes to show like you don't have to play like super tight, super perfect all the time. So it's, just, it's just a feel thing, man. So when we went into the studio to record the demo, we were we were more relaxed. It was like you know it's not going to be keeper, so you know let's just play it and and it has more of a loose feel than than as opposed to when we went into actually record it for the record it was like got to be really tight, and, but it wasn't as powerful and not as not as cool. So, uh, the right hand pattern is boom. There's a little chick in there. So for the verse, you're playing more on the low E string, which is tuned to D, and it's a little, little bit uh, more palm muting on that. So what you have is like, you have the whole, the, the big riff is just coming down a little bit. So that's how you do that. The B verse. 
So, you get uh, this position here. So up to speed, it's like, the news gets tied up. Chorus. So it's basically uh, so you got uh, open three, five, back down, and then my part is. A string five, A string open, and then E string three, and then open. And Snake's part is my part, Snake's part. I have a, I, I'm playing, my chords are a little different in the chorus. I'm playing something like this. So I'm I'm uh, I'm playing the same chords, but I'm adding notes on the top. So it sounds like this. So. Uh, I thought it just added a made made those chords sound bigger. You know, a lot of times uh, you want two guitar players to sound like one big guitar. One way of doing that is, uh, for example, here. You know, where Snake is playing. So, or you can even add uh, octave chords and 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 play like that. You don't play have to play the exact same position. Although sometimes in the studio, if you're not playing the same position, you might get some tuning issues. But, you know, that's a whole nother beast right there. When you get in the studio, you got to have a light touch, because even if you touch the string just a little, press down a little hard, it'll pull it sharp and you'll hear it. So um, there's a lot of examples. For example, you, you know, one guitar player might chug on something like this. <laughs> And then the other guy might hit the octave chord. You put them together, and it's like big guitar, one big guitar. Mud Kicker was a uh, was a couch riff, and uh, we turned it into a song. It's very cool, cool, heavy, slow kind of steamroller vibe going on. It's another it's another uh, song that's it, that's fun to do live. It's because it's it's got the opposite groove of Slave to the Grind, where that's just you know like a straight ahead gallop. This is more of a you know like of a dirge or something. Uh, so it's a it's a pretty cool song to play, and it goes like this. <laughs>
So the opening riff, which is also the riff to the chorus. This is interesting because you're, uh, it's uh, E, F sharp, G. And then you play the open G. A, E. So it's important to play that G note and then the open, the two open notes in the middle, which would be the, the open D and the open G. Just a little, basically the same thing, a little bit different uh, phrasing. Slow. So the most important part of that that riff is the is the G note and then the the higher octave, which is down up, right hand. Next would be the uh, the verse, and this is a palm muting deal again. You got to mute it hard on that. Mute it hard on that low E. B flat, A, E, G, E. Up to speed. That's kind of buried in the mix, but there's a little couple little uh, things that I that I throw in there. So that's just a little fill. drummer does a little choke on the cymbal there, so we just accent that. Then you open it up a little bit at the end, going into the B verse. So that's D. And then in this little lick. I think I think that's what Snake's doing over there. Once again, we kind of split it up a little bit. I'm trying to give you trying to give you the whole picture of two guitar players. chord is B going into the chorus. So once again the B verse. That's uh, F E. B verse into the chorus. So 
So that part is the turnaround in the chorus. D, A. Whole chorus. So the ending of the chorus is just pulling off on that G. And then it changes keys and goes up and be in the key of uh, B. You start on C to B to, to F sharp. You're doing typical power chords here, just the, the root and the fifth. A. There's also a little gallop in those verses, too. So it's like bam, 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 bam. So we change the key for the verse. We're up here. And then about halfway through, I start adding a third uh, on that riff. And that goes. That's to make it sound fucking badass. Evil. I'm just going to sit here and play this for a while. So, second B verse is in different key. Let's walk through this whole chord. Um, open E. A string is second fret. D string is second fret. G string is fourth fret. B string is fifth fret. E string is taking the night off. That is. Same as before. One more time from the top. Recap. Hey, well, thanks for watching. This was really fun. You know, it's it's all level players. This is for um, maybe uh, some of this some of these uh, songs you guys already know. Maybe you're new to it uh, and just learning for the first time. But one thing everybody has to remember is, as guitar players or musicians in general, we always look at other people and think, "Man, if I could only be that good. If I could only be that good." you will be that good. Um, milestones in, in what we do, uh, they take time and they're very slow and we don't even realize they're happening, but we are progressing and we are getting better. Um, and, you know, still to this day, I'm constantly trying to become a better player and uh, I don't know if I'll ever be the player I want to be, but that's good because there's always a, uh, 
there's always a goal and there's always that, that hunger to be, to be better. But remember, it's, it's, you know, if you feel like you're in a rut, just play through it because you will get through it and don't become discouraged because uh, you know, the end result is you will get better and uh, it's just hard to notice because it's a slow process. But enjoy what you're doing. That's the most important thing of all is just enjoy it because it's fun. Thanks for watching. Oh, my God.